I know about you is that you have ambition to be great. My job is to coach you to get all that greatness out of you. What is good, Finn Nation? What's good? It's your boy Reason, and we are back here for another one. Didn't think we'd be yesterday, but here we are because I have to because one of my favorite defensive players of all time has just been named the cornerback coach for the team I love. I'm so excited that Sam Madison is the new cornerback coach for the for the Miami Dolphins. We're going to dive into that. We're also going to dive in to the hire that happened after I went off the air yesterday. We're going to talk a little bit about the outside linebacking uh, linebacker hiring that happened yesterday with Tyrone McKenzie. We'll dive into that. Um, a couple other things we got to look into. Um, I got an article I want to look into from the great Barry Jackson, and it's actually about, you know, some things that Dolphin players are excited about in regards to Mike McDaniel. We'll talk about that. Um, Nine News in Denver a couple days ago tagged your boy um, and a bunch of other people in the Dolphins community in a, a tweet about Mike McDaniel, and uh, they did a video piece um, on Mike McDaniel and where he's come from, where he started. I want to play that for you guys. So we'll take a look at that. We'll look at the updated coaching staff, like, you know, how I do every time we, we get some hires going in here. We'll also look at some interesting news where, yes, Stephen Ross is lawyered up and the NFL is hiring Loretta Lynch. So we'll look over that. But Bruce Beal Jr. is lawyering up. Not just Stephen Ross. Bruce Beal Jr. is lawyering up as well. So, I kind of find that curious. Is he worried about the succession plan? We'll talk about that. So, we actually got like kind of a loaded show um, for a guy who wasn't planning on going live tonight. Uh, you know, I got a ton of stuff for you we're going to get into. Um, you know, and then either, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm probably still, you know, going to go live tomorrow. And we are going to discuss, um, you know, Top five players, you know, that I think Mike McDaniel and his staff should let walk and five players that they should keep. And then on Friday, we're going to have my birth. It's a birthday stream. It'll be my 37th birthday. And on top of that, um, I'm going to talk about the biggest needs for the Miami Dolphins heading into free agency. And in between on those shows, we'll have news and notes as they may fall. So it's going to end up being a uh, five day week on Finside the NFL, it looks like. Um, and for those of you that listen, First of all, I appreciate you. Second of all, the finish line, there's no episode this week. Uh, Richmond Webbs, his mother, passed last week. So uh, prayers up to Richmond. Um, you know, Richmond's dealing with it right now. So if you have Richmond on Twitter, wherever you may have Richmond, send him some love. Show him some love. Extend your hearts out to one of my good friends, man. Uh, Richmond Webb. I never thought I'd say that in my life, but yeah, Richmond Webb is a good friend of mine. And then uh, tomorrow night, I will be recording the new episode of Fin Too Deep, um, of course, with uh, Neil Driscoll. So uh, that'll be coming out. If we're recording it tomorrow night, that'll be on Friday for you guys. So I'll still have an audio podcast out for you guys this week. Um, But yeah, with Sam Madison, again, like it's amazing. You know, Wes Welker's back. Sam Madison, you know, is back. And, and and I talked about this, though. Just the most impressive thing about Mike McDaniel right now is he's taking from so many different teams and, you know, he's taking from so many different areas, you know. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm super impressed with the staff he's putting together. You know what I mean? I think the Sam Madison and the Tyrone McKenzie hires were really good. We'll talk about those. Um, you know, so, you know, we still need a uh, defensive back and safeties coach. And also, for those of you wondering, Chandler Henley, um, who the assistant offensive line coach we got from Atlanta, he was a named assistance co assistant quarterbacks coach. So he will actually um, – he will be uh, – working with Tua as well. So this is how this uh this this staff is coming together. I, you know, I talked to EM today and I know EM's been super busy uh just with everything he's got going on with work and man me and him are so excited. Like I, I know he's so hyped for the Daryl Bevel um 
higher. He loves that Daryl Bevel higher. You know, he's like, are you kidding me? You know, this guy. So, I, I, you know, I, I'm I'm really excited for this staff and how it's coming together, man. I, I really, I really am. I, I, this just has, you know, he's doing things early on in terms of putting together staff that Philbin never did. Cam Cameron never did. You know, that we haven't really seen since Tony Sperano when he brought on guys like Dable and stuff. We haven't seen someone putting together a staff like this since, you know, probably Tony Sperano. Let, let's just let's just call a spade a spade right now. Especially on the offensive side of the football. And to have no ego, to have no pride, to say, okay, I'll play ball and, you know, we'll go with Boyer and company, but for any openings, I'll add my guys. And then he goes out and he brings in Sam Madison. Right? And he brings on Tyrone McKenzie, who has a Patriots tie. I just truly think there's just a different feel. There's just a different feeling in the air. I don't know what it is, and it's not the normal same old optimism, same old hope. I know what that feels like. You know, I've been a fan since the '90s, right? A competent fan since the '90s. I've been a fan since I was born. You know. But my compre comprehending the game and what I was seeing and my level of competence wasn't really there until the early 90s, right? When I turned five, six, when I started really soaking things in. And, you know, so I just, I don't know. I, uh, you know, I, I just, I, it's just a different feeling, you know, like, Honestly, I don't remember being this excited since the Parcells hire. You know, like I truly don't haven't felt this excited since and I'll never forget this. I think I bought, you know, I was sitting there with my ex-girlfriend about like on and off of like 10 years and we're sitting in um, a restaurant in the in the city that I live in and uh, it. it and, and we're sitting there, and it was, I believe it was Turtle Jack's. It was the name of the restaurant. And we're sitting there. I know still know where the restaurant is, but it's been changed over three or four times. But the Turtle Jack's franchise still exists. Anyways, I digress. I'll never forget sitting at the table and we we're like eating. And I remember looking up at so we were in like one of those booths, and you could see the bar, right? Like the seating wasn't far away from the bar. And I'll never forget looking up at the screen and seeing the ticker about the, the Miami Dolphins hire Bill Parcells. And I remember my excitement. I'm like, you know, finally, you know, we're going to build a consistent winner, you know, and at least he brought Sperano, you know, I still don't agree with taking Jake Long over, you know, Matt Ryan. Short-term, Jake Long was the better player. Long-term, it's not even close, right? So, like, I remember all this feeling, and I haven't felt, this energy, this vibe since, man, it's like since we hired Parcells. You know, and it just feels like things are different and things are, he's doing, this guy's doing things different. And, you know, I haven't been able to say in a long time that you know, I love our offensive staff, and I love our offensive staff. And I keep saying this. Listen, if Tua works out, that's best for everyone involved. We don't waste a number five overall pick. We have him on a rookie contract. Let's roll. If Tua doesn't work out, McDaniel's still building a team that if they want to move off of him in 2023 or – you know, in whatever way they've got, you know, we're going to have an offensive line and a run game in place that someone can walk in and take over. I, I just believe that's the type of he's building a team right now. Everyone's so focused on the quarterback position, but he's just focused on building a team, building a team that can win in the trenches, building a team that can run the football, building a team when, especially in the AFC, when playoffs start and you got to play that smash mouth brand of football, he's building that, right? Like, what was my big complaint about the Titans' loss? You know, not only to his play, but we couldn't play smash mouth football with them. They beat us up. 
They ran the ball down our throats. Right up the gut. Right up the middle. Probably Raekwon Davis' worst game as a pro. And now he wants to build a team where we can do that to other teams. And that's how you win in the playoffs, man. See, the thing is, Past, I keep telling everyone, everyone's a you know, everyone's just caught in this highlight reel mentality. And I keep telling everyone, efficiency wins games. Joe Burrow almost won the Super Bowl because he had a super efficient game. Efficiency wins. Burrow's whole playoff run was efficiency. It wasn't 500 yard games and five touchdowns a game, it was efficiency. Keep telling people this. You can win with efficiency. How do you think they got to the NFC Championship and a Super Bowl in San Francisco with Jimmy G? You ask him to be efficient. The reason they didn't win the Super Bowl in the in the first year was because he didn't make the throw he needed to, to make. What was that one? To Emmanuel Sanders? I believe it was to Emmanuel Sanders. When he had Emmanuel Sanders wide open and he missed the throw. And I keep telling everyone, this is the recipe to success. Literally, this is how Tom Brady won. Six Super Bowls, right? I'm going to tell you right now. You're as efficient as can be. You don't turn over the football. And the four, five, six throws the game will present to you, you have to make them, and they help swing the outcome of the game in your favor. And by that, I mean like third and eight, and, you know, you make a 15-yard, um, you know, you make a 12 to 15-yard corner route and tight coverage. You nail it. You know, he, he in New England, his four, five, six throws were Gronk up the seam, right? You know, or Hernandez when he was there. But but that was his recipe, right? And then you even look at when he won, guys, when he won the Super, when they beat the Kansas City Chiefs, what did Tom Brady do? Efficiency and Gronk was eating off the off when the plays presented themselves. Gronk was eating in the Super Bowl last year. Because he, he it was a recipe that had won him Super Bowls in New England. So he just went and did it in the big game for the Tampa. Boom, it worked. Lo and behold, it worked. Efficiency wins. The, guys, the year he had Randy Moss and broke the single season passing yard record and broke the single season passing touchdown record, what happened? They lost the one game that mattered. Sure, they went undefeated up until the Super Bowl. But they lost the only game that mattered. Literally. It's about efficiency. You can have your big sexy throws. You can have your big sexy arms. It's about efficiency. That wins in the NFL. It's always won and it always will. It always will. Just like a running game will always win you games. It'll kick the opposing team off the field. Right? Lessen their chance and their time with the ball. Especially if you got a Mahomes or you got a high-powered offense. Your best defense is a good offense that keeps them off the field. And that's what we're building. That's exactly what we're building right now. That is what we are on the way to. That's that's it. Run the football, win in the trenches, dominate possession, thus you dominate the clock. Don't turn the ball over and make the plays when they present themselves. Boom! That's it. That's exactly what they're building right now with that outside zone. What do you think the outside zone is based upon? You send the flow of the game to one side, you set them up with keys, and then you throw false keys in there. It confuses, it causes chaos, and then boom, you bootleg to the other side. Guys are wide open. Make the play. There we go. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Tua would have made that throw to Emmanuel Sanders. Haul at your boy. If they would have had Tua... During that season, they went to the Super Bowl. They would have won that game. 
If they had this version of Tua right now, the one we haven't even seen in next season coming up, they would have won that game. I, I guarantee you they would have won that game. And that's I'm, – I'm not sitting here calling Tua, you know, the greatest quarterback in life. I'm telling you, he would have been efficient enough and accurate enough. He would have made that throw to Emmanuel Sanders. Hell, he made it in his rookie years to Jakeem Grant multiple times. Jakeem Grant just decided to drop it every time. It's all about efficiency, accuracy. Like, that's why I keep telling people. I keep saying this. When everyone was like, oh, I love him in the Payton's offense, I was like, yo, I love him in the Payton's offense, Sean Payton's offense too. But what a reason to always say, I wish I could see him in a Kyle Shanahan offense. And then I see people out here, well, you know, he's learning another system again. Is he really? Because this is the same Remember, Sarkeesian ran a variation of the Shanahan offense when he had two at Alabama. So schematically, he's comfortable. Schematically, he's familiar. The only learning curve for him is going to be terminology. That's it. He knows what he's getting into. And I love this staff. I love this offense. I love how this is coming together. You know what? I'm telling you, I said this before, I'll say it again. We're going to find out. And I said this before we even hired McDaniel. When I said McDaniel, Harbaugh, Caldwell, even Dable, I would add to that list. With those hires, you would find out in one in year one of those guys being in the building if two is the guy. And if they decide he's the guy, you roll with them. If they decide he's not the guy, you keep that same energy and you roll with your head coach. Because they know how to unlock guys. And look at the people he's surrounding him with. Teachers and a bunch of potential unlockers. That's everything that's being surrounded right now on two on the offensive side of the football is that. Same thing with Waddle. Right? We're going to find out. You know, go off to it. We're going to find out what Austin Jackson really is. We're going to find out Robert Hunt, Michael Dieter. We're going to find out what they really are under these guys. They got no excuses. I, I've already counted them off. I mean, you know, there's five guys on the offensive staff with serious offensive line experience. So, I mean, you look at this right now. Good golly, Miss Molly. It's exciting stuff. Ivan said, I promised myself I wouldn't get hyped like I did last season. And da this damn coach already has me again. I'm telling you, man, it feels different. It's okay to be hyped. It's okay. Don't let these, these people that want to rain on your parade, these people that, you know, they want to be Debbie Downers because they got PTSD, because they haven't done the research, because they don't know these hires well, because they don't know these, these coaches well. That's why you come here. Get informed. If I inform you to the best of my ability with all these hires, which I've done to this point, and you don't feel comfortable with them, that's cool. If you do feel comfortable with them, that's cool. But at least inform yourself. Don't be one of these people out of here speaking out of your depth. All right? Shout out to Fred for the four ninety nine dollars speak uh, super sticker. It's okay to be skeptical if you're informed, if you're very informed. It's okay to be hopeful if you're informed too. But I see a lot of people talking out of pocket who I know you know, aren't informed. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, it ain't who you think it is. Okay. All right. I'm telling you right now, because I know people are going to try and stir the pot. I'm talking about a few people and one of them is not TD. Let me put that out there right now. Okay. Cause I know people are going to try and stir that pot. James Steele said, I would like to see Mike McCoach, but I am talking about a certain amount of people. I just won't tell y'all who it is. I would like to see Mike McCoach and get another wide receiver like Waddle. Make it so they can't double them both. 12 personnel to force the defense in in uh into man one. What do you mean? Like uh single high, cover one? Is that what you mean by man one? Uh yeah, man. I mean, I think uh Smythe. Makes a lot of sense. I think uh, bringing back, I think Shaheen makes a lot of sense. I think Hunter Long mo makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, I, I 
you know, I think, well, I mean, they're already running a lot of 12 man personnel last year. I mean, the thing is Mike Gusecki just wanted to be labeled as a receiver, right? So, um, yeah. Um, you know, personally, um, you know, I, 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 you have enough talent right now to run 13 man personnel if you want or three man personnel. Right. Like you really do. Um, you even got Seathan Carter for another year and he's got fullback experience. If you want to go fullback, I do think they're going to, they're going to draft a fullback. I got an inkling position, but I'm telling y'all right now, the Matarizia train on YouTube starts here. If you don't know who he is, look him up. I want this punter. I want Matarizia from San Diego State University. You heard it here first on you I on YouTube. I want him. And you're going to have to take him in like the third or fourth. But this guy, guys, just go Google Matarizia, A R A I Z A. So when you hear anyone talking about him on YouTube, you know where it came from. All right. All right. Let's put that out there. Second of all, go look him up. The guy's got 80 plus, 80 plus yard bombs. All right. And he tackles. But you're gonna have to take him in in the third or fourth. Go check him out. I'm telling y'all right now. Topher says, I've been saying that for six months. Reason Topher, I haven't, my, don't take this the wrong way. I didn't notice, bro. Sorry. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, uh, all day, all day in the third or fourth round. I'm just saying, I am just saying. And he kicks field goals. Like, the guy does it all. It's ridiculous. The guy kicks like 51-yard field goals. It's stupid. Go. Get this man. In the third or fourth round, get Pilardi out and get him. That man lays the lumber, too, when he tackles. Let's go. And James says, I don't know about drafting a punter that high. You have to. He will not be around. Like, I'm telling you, James, go search. I'm putting his name in the comments right now. Okay? Go search this man. I'm not lying to you. Put his name in the comments right there. Literally go search that man. And then come back and talk to me, James. Let's go. Go look at him. Anyways, enough of, enough of pushing agendas here. There's going to be draft agendas coming out, man. I'm telling you right now on my side. I can already feel some. Oz says Penning. Bro, I heard they liked Penning from uh, the Senior Bowl. I heard the Dolphins were sniffing around Penning real hard. If y'all remembered, I loved Spencer Brown last year, who the Bills ended up taking, both Northern Iowa guys. So I'm down for Penning all day. Down for Penning all day. But yeah, uh, exactly very tired. Thank you. Thank you. That's why I want him. He is a game that, yo, a guy who can punt like 60 to 80 yards consistently. That's, that's, that's changing. That is changing and shifting the field in our favor. That is how you become a top special teams unit. That is where you go. I'm telling you right now. Go check him out. Like, if you can shift the field position like that, that's a rare. That's a game changer. I mean, I never thought I'd say this, but he's got the man's got like an 87 yard punt. I'm not even lying to you guys. And I think he had a 90 yard punt too. And now everyone, I'm seeing everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go check him out, man. Matarizia at San Diego State University. Go check him out. I'm not lying to y'all. Once you see him, you'll be like, oh, crap. That's a secret. That's a weapon, man. I never thought I'd say a punter's a weapon, but 
and he lays the lumber. Like, you hear his hits, okay? Like, the man is not a jabroni. Like, he will be the first man down there if he could be, and he will lay the lumber. I'm loving him. Matt Arizia, uh, you're going to have to do third or fourth round. I don't, he's not, you know, he's not, yeah, the Raiders will draft him in the first. Bro, I saw Bengals fans were pushing to draft him in the first. Bro, I'm telling you, if this guy goes in the second, I literally wouldn't even be shocked. If this guy goes in the second, I literally wouldn't even be shocked. And remember, I was the guy last year uh, when no one wanted to believe it. Remember, I was telling everyone the linebacker out of Alabama. Uh, I forget the kid's name. Who's the kid? He was injured all the time. I kept telling everyone, yo, he's not going to get drafted. He's going to be a UDFA. What the hell was his name? Um, what was his name? It was Dylan Moses. I remember everyone was so high on Dylan Moses. I'm like, yo, this guy's got serious red flags. He's not going to get drafted. And people were like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Same thing with, I'm telling you, Matt Ariza is going to go high. Yeah, Dylan Moses. Yeah, Dylan Moses, I knew. I was calling it on Twitter and on YouTube. This guy's not going to get drafted. And everything. Oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I saw a NFL linebacker on tape. I'm like, watch. And, of course, I think he signed with, like, Jacksonville as the UDFA. So, anyways, go check out Matt Arizia. The agenda has begun. There's a couple guys we're going to be pushing for over here. There's a couple agendas we're going to push. All right? You know the Drake London agenda been here for a minute. All right. Now I'm seeing I'm seeing mocks come out from like Daniel Jeremiah, and they have Drake London as the first uh wide receiver going off the board. So um man, but we're gonna get some agendas rolling here. Don't you don't you worry, man. You know the Abraham Lucas right tackle agenda been here for a couple years too, out of Washington. So we got some agendas we're gonna get to once draft season starts. Don't you worry, man. Uh, yeah, Moses did go undrafted. Yep. Yes, I do like uh, Mumado from Wyoming. All right, let's get into this, man. We got a bunch to go over here. So let's start off with the good news, man. Enough draft talk. We we we'll get into that. Don't you don't y'all fret. Don't y'all fret. Um. All right. So it started off, you know, um, earlier with Adam Schefter. Um, about just under two hours ago, tweeting out that Miami is hiring former Dolphins legend Sam Madison as its cornerbacks pass game specialist per source. Madison, a former, uh, sorry, a four-time former Pro Bowl selection with the Dolphins from 97 to 2005, spent the past three seasons coaching the Chiefs secondary and cornerbacks. Um, do I love it? Hell to the Yes. Uh, you know, Sam Madison and Patrick Sertain, you know, easily one of my favorite combos ever uh, in the backfield. I love Devontae Davis and uh, Sean Smith. Everyone slept on them. Um, obviously, Brent Grimes with whoever was good, too. And, um, you know, obviously, I like Byron and X, but arguably one of the best tandems ever in the backfield in the secondary. So I, I love it. You know, um, he's spent his last three seasons with Kansas City. Um, you know, he won a Super Bowl um when the Chiefs defeated San Francisco. You know, he was the corner coach when they won. Um, you know, and he's helped, you know, young players such as Rashad Fenton, um, Legarius Sneed, and Traverius Ward um, you know, really blossom in the secondary for the Chiefs. Um, I I really like the hire, you know, and he's he's you know, he, you know. He's from the um, Steve Spagnolio tree, basically. You know, they, they played together with the Giants. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he did. You know, Madison was on that Super Bowl Giants team, um, too. So he won, a, he won a ring with the Giants. So, you know, you look at the development he's had with some of the players. You look at, you know, Steve Spagnolio is one of the better defensive minds in the NFL. So they played together with the Giants and then. You know, when Spagnolio became a, uh, 
you know, DC brought him on his staff, gave him his first coaching opportunity. And like I said, you know, guys like Legarius Sneed, um, Chavarius um, Ward, um, Rashad Fenton, you know, there's there's been good development under Sam Madison. And I really don't think there's a better guy that, you know, I I didn't think I'd ever say this, but is this not an upgrade from Gerald Alexander in terms of, you know, who better from X and Byron to listen to? Like, don't get me wrong. I still wish, of course, Joe Alexander was on the staff in some capacity, right? Because we still have special teams DB coach to be filled. He's taking the corner coach um, position, right? Because uh, Burks um, has left. Uh, uh, Charles Burks left um, and he went to Cincinnati to be their corner coach. So that's why the opening opened up for Sam Madison. And, you know, who better for X and Byron to be around than Sam Madison? Like, are, are you kidding me right now? Sam Madison coaching Xavier Howard and Byron Jones and retain Nick Needham, please, under this man. So I'm a I'm a huge huge fan um of this hire. I think it's another strong hire for Mike McDaniel, a way for him to put his thumbprint on this def on this defense a little bit more, getting in guys clearly he wants to bring in. Um, you know, this is his second guy now in, in two nights as uh you know the staff continues to fill out. I, I'm just truly a huge fan of this move. You know, it's a bit of fan service, but at the same time, it's a damn good hire. I mean, who who's going to sit there and tell you this is a good hire? This is a bad hire. Continuing all on, Adam Schefter said this, this is all part of Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel putting the finishing touches on the staff with cornerback coach Charles Burks departing for a similar role in Cincinnati. Thus the spot and the need for Sam Madison. So there you go. Um, shout out to Charles Burks and the work he did with our corners over the last couple of years. He did a fantastic job. Shout out to Charles Burks. He got some good games out of Justin Coleman last year too. Give this guy an award if you want my honest opinion. Um, and then obviously Barry Jackson. So the local media did confirm, can confirm Schefter report that former Dolphins stand out and Sam Madison is new Dolphins cornerback coach. Again, Dolphins were prepared to keep cornerback coach Charles Burks, but he took the job with Cincy creating a role for Madison who has coaching experience with KC. So a great hire, another strong hire, a guy who in three years is developing young talent, a guy who coached that room when they won a Super Bowl, you know, and he's won a Super Bowl. Think of it. He's won a Super Bowl as a positional coach, and with the Giants, he won a Super Bowl as a player. Another guy who's been there and done it. Like, tell me this isn't a great great hire another guy walking in with rings another guy walking in with experience another guy who knows what he's doing like can you imagine sam madison xavian howard and byron jones and nick needham sitting down and talking football and talking the position talking about how they can get better like doesn't that just like send goosebumps up your arms Another guy who's been there, done it. Another guy who he's, you know, one of the best to ever rock the color, our colors at that position. Topher, I do agree that this is one of the better staffs in the last decade. I love the staff, man. And, you know, I just, if Boyer finds that 2020 play calling form, we are in for a treat on both sides of the ball potentially this year. Brian Cox got hired, funny enough, today. So flowed on. Funny you say we need Brian Cox as linebacker coach. He got hired. So I love the Sam Madison hire. And, um, you know, I think it's just another strong addition 
to an already very strong staff. I really do. Continuing on, last night there was, uh, you know, uh, before we get to what happened last night, I just want to quickly read to you guys what the Sun Sentinel is saying about the Sam Madison hire. Um, shout out to the homie David For Forones, who's a friend of the show. He's been on the show. The Miami Dolphins are bringing back the one, bringing back one of the team's all-time great, Sam Madison, as an assistant coach. Madison will join new coach Mike McDaniel staff as cornerbacks coach, pass game specialist, a league source confirmed to the South Florida Sun Sentinel. The news was first reported by ESPN on Wednesday night. Madison, a former four-time Pro Bowl selection for the Dolphins, playing in Miami from 97 to 2005, played three seasons with the New York Giants and won a Super Bowl with them. Madison had 30, 38 interceptions in his career. The former Dolphins great spent the past three seasons as a secondary cornerback coach with the Chiefs. He won another ring as a coach in the 2019 season, which ended with a Chiefs victory over the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl, funny enough, at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. McDaniel was on the coaching staff for the Niners that game too. Uh, prior to coaching the NFL, Madison also was an assistant coach locally in South Florida with high school powerhouse St. Thomas Aquinas. Madison takes the role that was originally being retained by Charles Burke, Burks, but Burks is departing for a similar role with Cincinnati Bengals, according to ESPN. Madison replacing Burks, the Dolphins still have an opening for safeties and overall defensive backs coach, um, which was vacated by the by the firing of Gerald Alexander. McDaniel has worked quickly in the week and a half since lead, landing the first head coach, his first head coaching job, nearly filling out the primary coaching staff and even bringing aboard his former Yale teammate, Chandler Henley, an assistant quarterbacks coach. So I love it, man. You know, I think it's a good hire. You know, I really do. Another, another a coach that's going to continue to develop under Mike McDaniel, that's a proven good teacher. And he's a legend on top of it. How can you not love this? And then yesterday, if you guys didn't know, after I was done going live, the Dolphins hired Tyrone McKenzie as the new outside linebackers coach, a former Patriots player and br another bright young coach. McKenzie has spent time coaching linebackers with the Titans, Lions, and Colts. So, you know, like they said, um, you know, McKenzie, he began his coaching career in 2017. Four years after his playing career ended, he was assistant special teams coach with the Rams for one season before becoming the inside linebackers coach with the Titans. He spent 2018-2019 in Tennessee before joining the Lions as a linebackers coach in 2020. McKenzie, who played 19 games for the Vikings and Buccaneers in the early 2010s, played collegiately at the University of South Florida and was a third-round pick of the New England Patriots in 2009. So again, another young coach who's being labeled as bright. Um, another young coach coming in here um, who, quite frankly, it just adds another great layer to this staff. And quite frankly, I mean, is there a hire we can really bash yet? You know? Right? Is there, is, you know, this man has coached linebackers under Mike Vrabel who played linebacker. What does that tell you about Mike Vrabel's opinion of him? If he's going to allow this guy to coach a position he played. So, I, I'm just, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a fan of this. You know, another good hire. So, um, and the other thing too is if I if I remember correctly, let me just double check here for a sec. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure he did. Let me just double check my notes here. You know your boy always got notes when he comes through. Um uh, da -da 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 -da. 
Okay. I don't see where he's talking about. Um. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I like the hire. I think it's a great hire. I think it adds just another piece to this defensive staff where guys with, with the hiring that's gone on right now, I have high expectations heading into the uh, free agency in the draft. I have high expectations. I really do. I cannot wait to see this team come together. And I am so excited to try and do my best to forecast the moves they're going to make. I'm really excited. Um, does X day? I think X days. Yes. I think he's going to ask for more money. Um, I've heard the numbers, but I think he's going to stay. I think McDaniel's going to make these guys believe in the, believe in him and what he's doing. And they're going to follow Boyer because of him. I really truly believe that, you know, and I, I, I really hope I can sit back and say, I told everyone when it comes to Mike McDaniel, because you know, that train started right here. And y'all are on it for the ride. And I'm telling you, if Mike McDaniel works out, it's going to be such a blessing for this franchise, and I really hope he does. So here is how the staff does look so far. Again, Mike McDaniel, Frank Smith, Boyer, Danny Crossman. That's your head coach with your OCs. Your quarterback, passing coordinator, Daryl Bevel. Fantastic hire. Can't rave about it enough. Pro arguably one of the best hires this offseason is Daryl Bevel. I'm telling you. Assistant quarterback coach Chandler Henley, um, ass assistant head coach and tight ends coach John Embry, wide receiver coach Wes Welker, running back coach and associate head coach Eric Studsville, Matt Applebaum rounds out as the offensive line coach, Sam Madison is your new cornerback coach, the linebacker coach returning is Anthony Campanelli, um, the new outside linebacker coach is Tyrone McKenzie, and Austin Clark is returning as the defensive line coach. So now we just need to find um the safety and a db coach and other than that it's just like assistants and such to fill everything out right assistant positional coaches so that's what we know so far of what's coming in that is your your overview of what the dolphins coaching staff does look like thus far um good stuff man i mean how can you not like it right and then just to give you guys a little bit of a taste of what we're getting with a guy um, like, um, you know, like Tyrone McKenzie. Um, I just wanted to take a, you guys take a look at him working with uh, linebackers in Tennessee. This man's out here taking hits. Saying, let's go. Line me up. Wake my ass up, he says. Let's go. Take it. He gets in the trenches, baby. Another teacher. Hands on. Gets in the trenches. Love it. Woo! He'll take him. Love it. Hands on teacher. Ready to get right in the trenches. Big fan of that. Huge fan of that. Hands-on teacher. I love it, man. It's just another one thing, quick thing. You got to see this energy um, that he that he brings. He's very hands-on, very energetic. Look, at he wants that. Look, at he wants that contact. Let's go. Like, totally ready to take that. You know, that man totally gets in there. Great approach. Hands on coach. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, interesting article that came out um, yesterday. Uh, and um, you guys are, uh, it's uh, Miami Dolphin players. Um, this is what excites some Miami Dolphin players about my, Mike McDaniel. Dolphins brass believe new coach Mike McDaniel will be good for Tua Tungvalu on Miami's offense. Players also hope that will be the case. 
Two Dolphins players, both impending free agents, spoke in recent days about McDaniel's potential to boost an offense that ranked 22nd in points per game and 25th in yards per game. Now Mike McDaniel coming in, he's more of an offensive guy, linebacker Brendan Scarlett told former NFL receivers Terrell Owens and Matthew Hatchett on Fubo Sports Network, which I think will actually be good probably for two and his development as a quarterback. I've seen both, had defensive co head coaches, offensive head coaches. There's a lot more focus placed on both sides, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Receiver Matt Collins, appearing on Jason Lackenforner's Baltimore radio show, said of McDaniel's hiring and the offense that he helped coach in San Francisco. I'm super excited seeing high-powered stuff they've been doing. That's cool. I can say that I could I say that could be us. The opportunity is there. Asked about Brian Flores' hiring, Holland said, being in the NFL, nothing really surprises me anymore. As players, there's not really any method behind it that has anything to do with my pay grade. Scarlett confirmed that Flores had a chance to tell at least some of the players in person that he had been dismissed. It was the Monday after our last game, and I was driving in a little bit late. So I was actually late to my meeting with Flo. My exit meeting, I pulled in and walked in the locker room, and he had everybody huddled up and was just like, yeah, man, I'm out. And I walked in and just saw that. And I was like, whoa, threw me totally off. It was a shock. Um, and then he goes on to say, you know, his experience with Flo was a great one. Uh, his first season in Miami, seeing the way he goes about his business and treats the staff, you feel like he runs a tight ship. And the players not only respected him as a coach, he could also relate to us in a way and had a personal relationship with us, with him. Uh, we had a rough start. I think it was like one in seven. So we kind of knew that it could go bad at that point. You start off with that many losses, and it was rough. We understood some people's jobs might be on the line, but finishing pretty strong, we won eight out of nine. We were balling. Everybody, I think, in the locker room, we were like, Flo's going to stay. We're going to keep it consistent. So when he got fired, it was a shock to me. It was a shock to everybody, I think. It shakes up the whole building. So you see Mike McDaniels, uh, you know, he, he you know, players – seem excited about the offense he's going to bring here. But at the same time, some seem to still be coping with the fact that Flores is out the door. So real interesting stuff in terms of it's just, it's, it's a crazy dynamic because there's, they're, they're so different from each other. Right. So it's interesting to see how that plays out. And now I want to show this, um, share this with you guys. Um, so nine news, um, there nine news tagged me a couple days ago, um, in a piece, uh, they're out of Denver about Mike McDaniel and they had this video up on YouTube and, um, it's called the Mike McDaniel story and it's from 2000 on nine news. And I want to, I want to show you guys, um, this whole, you know, Mike McDaniel, his roots, where he came from, how it came to be. And I really thought this was just a really cool video that y'all would be interested in to see about our new head coach. So let's check it out. Once upon a time, there was a nine-year-old boy named Michael from Greeley, who, like thousands of young Bronco fans, spent countless hours at training camp outside the lines hoping for an autograph. One day, Michael lost his hat on the UNC campus. That night, he ran into Broncos assistant video director, Gary McCune. Looked like he'd been crying. And he, he was the most polite young man that I had ever met in my life. And he approached me and asked me if somebody had turned in a Charlotte Hornets hat. The hat never turned up, so McCune went to the Greeley Mall, bought another one for the boy he just met, and gave it to him the next day at training camp. Oh, I, I can't take this from you. This is, this is too nice. I, I can't take that. I said, yeah, just go ahead and take it. And I said, hey, if, if your mom and dad have a problem with this, this is my business card. Uh, why don't you have them call me? I'd never really been exposed to Wait for generosity it. from Here we go, Mike, Mike McDaniel. It was, it was kind of weird. McCune invited Michael and his family to watch practice inside the ropes the next day. And I think that's when Michael told him that it was just his mother, <laughs> just him and his mother. Donna McDaniel was a single mother who raised Michael by herself. And McCune eventually fell in love with Michael's Atta mother. Boy. 
Yeah, she wasn't very friendly to me initially. <laughs> she was kind of, she was still kind of skeptical of me. I'm not even sure if my, uh, my mom really liked him. He just liked the, she just liked the way he acted with me. You know, we were, we hit it off right from the start. McCune and Donna married three years later. A new family was formed, and Michael became a member of the Broncos family. I remember being five or six. Look at this. Just, you know, saying, Here we I go. I have to be a Denver Bronco football player. I, I cannot. Mike McDaniel listened to Lincoln Park. Successful if I don't play professionally. But then, I, you know, as I got older, I started realizing that, you know, that was kind of a shaky, shaky dream. So then, like, literally, my dream came true, you know. Michael's a senior in high school now. Lincoln He's Park all day. a great student, played football at Smoky Hill, and became a game day ball boy this season. He still has a hard time believing everything that's happened since he lost that hat eight years ago. I gained a stepfather, you know. I, I ended up moving to Denver, which became a much better situation for me. And it, I got to do my dream job. I, I kind of contributed to my mother's happiness, too, because she, she was single, too, you know, just like me. And we both gained just out of this one little hat on this. It was like it was meant to be. Just a great gift that any only child deserves to have. I mean, what great, like, what a great story. Like, that was honestly a uh, pretty cool story when you break it down, man. Like, I I'm sorry. I got to give props, man. Like, th that's a pretty cool story, how everything came together for Mike McDaniel and how football just is a part of his life. You know what I mean? I just think that's pretty cool. I I'm just going to say pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. All right, continuing on, um, after watching Mike McDaniel go through his Lincoln Park phase, there's already 620 of you in the room still. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Um, you know, Become a channel member if you, if you can. Um, you can hit the join button below, the description below. Become a Patreon, man. Early access to my big boards you're going to have. My Jalen Waddle film study, which I'm eventually going to get to, you'll have early access to. Um, just show some love, man. Um, and just smash that like button if you can. Hey, and subscribe if you're new. On our way to 7K, we are getting closer and closer. We're under 170 to um, 7K. So let's get there, man. All right, continuing on, you know, we spoke a little bit about Flores earlier. Well, let's talk about something interesting here. And so the NFL, they have brought in Loretta Lynch to fend off the Brian Flores bias suit. The National Football League has hired former U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch to defend it in a high-profile race discrimination case filed earlier this month by former Miami Dolphins head coach Brian Flores. Lynch, a partner at Paul Weiss, um, Rifkind, Wharton, and Garrison, is working with the law firm's chairman, Brad Karp, on the litigation according to four sources familiar with the situation. The Dolphins, also named as a defendant in the Flores case, and their real estate billion owner, Stephen Ross, have turned to Quinn Emanuel Urquhart and Sullivan litigator William Burke, the sources said. Bruce Beal, president of the Ross-controlled related companies, has right of first refusal to take control of the Dolphins. Beal is being represented by Boyles Schiller Flexner partner Joshua Schiller, who returned to the firm last year after three-month leave of absence stemming from a domestic abuse charges that were later dropped, said three sources knowledgeable of the matter. So Bruce Beal, who has like a, 40, has a high stake right now already, he owns a percentage of the team already, and he holds like a chairman role. I believe he's the president and chairman right now, if I remember correctly. He's hired his own representation, and it ain't the same as Ross's. And if you know Ross's representation, um, William Burke is the same guy who represented Robert Kraft when he was charged in that Palm Beach County massage parlor scandal. So Ross went out and got Kraft's boy. So, you know, Ross out here getting, 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 you know, the same guy that Kraft had. So that's interesting. Um, the NFL Dolphins, Beal, and the three firms declined to comment. 
Flores accused the league of pervasive racial bias in the lawsuit filed February 1st in the New York federal court. The litigation named three NFL teams, the Broncos, Dolphins, Giants as defendants. Flores, who was black and Hispanic, was fired by the Dolphins in January and was not subsequently chosen to fill several NFL head coach openings. His complete cited statements from some league executives, including attorney in chief diversity and inclusion officer Jonathan Bean, but the NFL needed to do more for minorities. Flores is represented by Douglas Wigder, the New York trial lawyer behind bombshell discrimination and harassment lawsuits against Fox News, disgraced firm, film producer Harvey Weinstein, and Goldman Sachs Group, Inc. John Elefiterkakis? Elefiterkakis. Elefiterkakis is co-counsel. Say that 10 times fast. He's definitely obviously Greek. Is a co-counsel to Flores. Both lawyers said Flores wasn't hired this month by the Houston Texans to fill their head coach vacancy because of the suit. The NFL in a recent statement called Flores' bias claims meritless and said diversity is core to its mission. The league said it would investigate the specific allegation in his lawsuit accusing Ross of offering the former Dolphins coach a $100,000 bonus for each game loss during the 2019 season. Burke is co-managing partner of Quinn Emanuel's Washington office and co-chair of the firm's crisis law and strategy group. Burke's prominent clients over the years have included New England's Patriots staff owner, Robert Kraft. NFL.com, a news website owned by the league, reported Monday that violations of competitive integrity rules could force Ross to sell the Dolphins. Three-fourths of the NFL team's uh, 32 team owners would need to vote Ross out of the league. Beal, a longtime Ross lieutenant at Related, was approved by NFL owners in 2016 to take control of the Dolphins if Ross no longer controls the franchise. Uh, Boy Schiller has previously represented Related in court and is a tenant in the company's Hudson Yards development in Manhattan. Josh Schiller, the son of Boy Schiller, co-founder, was arrested and charged with domestic violence in January 2021 following an incident involving his wife at their home in Ross, California. He returned to the firm following a internal investigation and the charges were dropped after the prosecutor said he could no longer prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. So then it just goes into more legal connections here um, in terms of uh, like how all these different lawyers are connected to each other and stuff. So nothing really like worth. I mean, I'll read it, I guess. The NFL has enjoyed a long time relationship with Paul Weiss, which since 2007 has a role, I had a role on nearly 25% of all cases involving the league in U S federal courts. According to Bloomberg law data, Paul Weiss's CARP has for years handled con concussion and benefits uh, benefits litigation for the NFL. He also leads the Wall Street firm, which is among the most profitable in the country. Lynch, Merlerda Lynch, who they've hired, ran the Justice Department for two years during the Obama administration and joined Paul Weiss in 2019. She was tapped by the New York-based NFL in late 2020 on work on an inquiry into claims and misconduct involving owners of what was then called the Washington football team. That team, controlled by Daniel Snyder and formerly known as the Redskins, adopted the commander nickname earlier this month. The Washington commanders and Snyder are now the subject of another NFL investigation to allegations of sexual harassment in the workplace. Paul Weiss also have ties to the Dolphins, having handled a bully investigation for the team Bullygate in 2014 that found some players used homophobic and racial slurs towards a teammate. James Turner, a former Dolphins offensive line coach, unsuccessfully sought to sue Paul Weiss for defamation, defamation over the report um, it issued on the matter. The report that report led Ross, a former tax lawyer who was advised by Paul Hastings on his one billion dollar acquisition of the Dolphins in 2009, to form the Ross Initiative in sports for the Equality Inc. Rise, as a New York-based nonprofit organization is known, is led by CEO Dehan Billings Burford, a longtime advocate for anti-discrimination efforts and a former associate associate at Simpson Thatcher and Barlett. So basically, it's just all rich white guys just helping each other out. Um, but in regards to everything here, um, you know, 
it's interesting that everyone the, that Bruce Beal's lawyering up and he's going with different representation than Ross. Um, you know, that's kind of kind of interesting. So, and I mean, obviously, you know, Brooke, who Ross is going with, I mean, he got craft off, so I'm sure he's gonna help Ross out, right? So interesting stuff. Um, and now Beal and Stephen Ross are officially lawyered up ready to go guys um i appreciate you all i know this was a last minute thing you know I was sitting with the wife settling down watching some yellowstone and i said i gotta go live baby so um i'm gonna get out of here i appreciate each and every one of you for coming through be hyped be hopeful there's plenty of cause and plenty of huh, funny enough reason to um be hyped and hopeful you know, I think there's a lot of positives coming down the pipeline right now. And I'm super excited. And I think you should be too, guys. So shout out to Mike McDaniel for the job he's doing right now. It's freaking phenomenal. And it's poetry in motion to an extent. So I absolutely love it. I'm excited. I can't wait to, for this season. I wish it was right around the corner. Um, You know, I, I appreciate all of you for coming out. Um, and you know what, guys, I'm going to see you, um, tomorrow night. I'm going to see you guys. Um, we're going to be back here tomorrow night. Um, and we'll be back Friday night as well for my birthday stream. A couple nights away until my birthday. Um, appreciate each and every one of you, um, for coming out here, um, check check the comment section. I just dropped a comment for all y'all, so check it out if anyone's interested. And guys, I will see all y'all tomorrow. And until next time, everyone stay happy, healthy, safe, and blessed. You already know what time it is. Fins up all day, every day, baby. <laughs>